Hello and good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live on news up here at the Sawe Kanda. Also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, the SCV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Akonsi. Tonight, we stay on the ongoing bipartisan probe into the alleged plot to oust the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufo Dampari, which has been adjourned to 2nd October after the National Security Minister and Bugri Nabo testified in camera earlier today. We have details for you because the vice chair of this committee is going to be joining us tonight. There's some interesting detail coming out of today's in-camera hearings earlier in the day. Also, ASEAN North Member of Parliament Kennedy Japon secures the top spot again, followed by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia on the ballot paper for the November 4 primaries of the new patriotic party to elect its flag bearer ahead of election 2020. 24. The aspirants have been speaking about what their positions mean to them. Stay with us. Also, the National Democratic Congress insists the new cocoa prize announced by President Kufado is a ripoff on cocoa farmers, but the NPP maintains the increase is a record high. Tonight, all the people who have not been heard in this debate, the farmers, the cocoa farmers are joining us tonight on this back and forth about the cocoa pricing. Because the NPP has been talking, the NDC has been talking, but how about the cocoa farmers themselves, who are supposed to be either the victims or the beneficiaries of this announcement? What do they make of all of this? Stay with us. They'll be joining us here on Ghana tonight. As always, you're on a very part of the program. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using. Uh, it's Ghana tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana briefs. The National Security Minister, Albert Kandapa, would not disclose the content of an interim report from the National Security regarding the leaked audio tape at the center of the alleged plot to oust the IGP. The minister told the committee that the document cannot be released because it remains classified. This came to light at a media briefing after an in-camera hearing of the committee in Parliament, which included the sector minister and key witness, Bugri Nabu. COP Mensa um, um, and the rest of them, even um, Chief of Bukri Nabu, they were present. The only person who couldn't show up was the IGP, although he was penciled for today. And then they agreed with what the Minister for National Security said. And then he was accordingly discharged. NPP presidential aspirants Kennedy Ejapon has picked number one after balloting for the party's November 4 presidential primaries. The Asin Central Member of Parliament also picked number one during the Superdelegate Conference on August 26. Vice President Dr. Mahamud Dubaumia picked the second slot, while former Agriculture Minister Dr. Osei Friyakoto picked the third slot. A former MP for Mampong, Francis Adai Nimo, picked the fourth slot. The NPP is expected to hold its National Delegates Conference on November 4 to elect a flag bearer for the 2024 general elections. The NPP's Presidential Elections Committee Chairman, Rev. Prof. Iron Michael Kwe, has noted that the party has resolved a number of issues and requests made by the aspirants themselves. We have resolved a number of uh, issues and requests made by the aspirants themselves. We are generally agreed that there will be nothing like camping of persons so that people will come freely and vote freely uh, on this occasion. And we are going to meet the police together with the uh, uh, EC officials so that everybody sings for the same hymn book on that day.
Environmental Protection Agency has declared the Ghanaian owner of the quarry at Anto Aboso in the Shama district of the Western Region wanted. This comes in the wake of the explosion which claimed five lives, including its Chinese partners. EPA has launched investigations into the incident, but officials say the Ghanaian owner who is key in the ongoing investigations is nowhere to be found. EPA has meanwhile removed the Western Region Director. Dr. Jordi Wu is to report to the Head Office for Reassignment, while the Central Region Director, Shine Fiagomo, takes over from him. The Chief Justice Getri Tokonu has cautioned court bailiffs against demanding money from persons they serve in court processes. She was speaking at the 2023 Judicial Service Staff Deba at Cape Coast. We are here to serve the people of Ghana. I don't want you to ever forget that. So bailiffs, you cannot be demanding money from people before you set off to serve their processes. Because that was not the condition of service that you were given. If you don't like the job because we won't allow you to be demanding money, you can give me my job back. The annual inflation rate fell in August to a 10-month low at 40.1% from 43.1% in July. This means between August 2022 and August 2023, the rate of price increase has dipped by 3% amid the city stability. Foods such as cereal and cereal products continue to drive inflation. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Coming up next here on Ghana Tonight. We stay on the ongoing bipartisan probe into the alleged plot to have the IGP removed by President Kofuado, which has been adjourned to 2nd October after the National Security Minister and Bugri Nabu testified in camera earlier today. We've got some details for you tonight and after the in-camera hearings earlier today uh that's the chair of the committee samuel atachia made some specific comments about uh what happened in camera but before that cop alex mensa one of the three persons who were interrogated by the the committee left the committee hearing today in high spirit in fact he told Ghanaians, who the journalists who, who accosted him outside, that the truth will come out soon. Take a look. Sorry, I don't want to make any comment on this issue. At appropriate time, I will speak on it. You are now, done with the scrutiny attention. today? I'm sorry. You are done today? Yeah, we're done. We've you are done? Yes. The IGP didn't come? Yes, he did. The National Security Minister did, uh, appeared before the committee. Yes, I've told you that I don't want to speak on it. Have you have you presented your evidence? No. Why? They didn't give you the opportunity. Not even started yet. They've not even started. No. So who did they deal with? I told you I don't want to make any comment. But you're a strong man. Why and wouldn't I you want to talk about it? You're a strong man. You're a strong man. We know that you are. Yes, you, I will not make You are the blunt issue. type. So whatever you see, will, you say. That I will not make comment on this issue. So we will take it that today was the preliminary of uh, the. I don't know. I don't know. You can get these answers from the parliamentary select committee. But are you happy? Are you happy with the process so far? Very, very happy. You are happy with the process. Very. Have you? Been, do you think you have been given a fair hearing on very, this? Very, very fair. So we should be expecting. Uh, very fair. Very fair. Very fair. very fair. We should be expecting solid evidence yes, from you. Yes. Is your evidence ready? Everything is ready. Everything is ready, including what? <laughs> including what? <laughs> I'm not ready to comment on anything. I only tell you everything is ready. And that's it. I see. What is that one? The proceedings that we are going to do. Nothing. You see. What is that one? So when are we, when are we expecting you? The second, second of October, I should be coming before the committee. Yes. All right. Thank you. What, what's your message to Ghanaians? I don't know. I don't want to speak now. Ghanaians are willing to hear from you. The truth will come out. The truth? Yes. From COP Alex Mensa? Yes. All right. Yes. Wish to see you again. <laughs> That's COP George Alex Mensa there. Remember, 
he is retiring, today is October 13, correct? He is retiring in three days. That's October 16. He said, uh, he said that uh, that's September 16, I beg your pardon. He said that earlier. So today, September 13, in three days, he's supposed to retire. Now, he's indicated that he has solid evidence. 2nd of October, he's appearing before the committee again. And the final words you heard him speak there says the message to Ghanaians is that the truth will come out soon. What's that truth? We're getting to it. But Atachia is chair of this seven member committee probing this leaked audio tape. He indicated that the National Security Minister, Albert Kandapa, they have also instituted investigations into this leaked tape, but they are not going to make their report available to the committee because it is classified. Take a look. The first person we called upon was the Minister for National Security, Honorable Khan Napa. And the reason why we called him is that Superintendent, Superintendent Asari had confessed that he appeared before the National Investigation Bureau. So we will not do a shortage of by not calling the Minister who has superintendents over that bureau, the NIB. So he came to say, indeed, and in fact, um, he um, then I recalled some of the Asari and the rest of them in relation to the same lifting and they've done a lot of work on it. It's an interim report. Why you not share it with us? Because if you care to know, it's a national security document, it's not declassified. So for the Asari, um, COP Mensa um, um, and the rest of them, even um, Chief of Bukri Nabu, they were present. The only person who couldn't show up was the IGP, although it was pencil for today. And then they agreed with what the Minister for National Security said. And then it was accordingly discharged. Because of the nature of what is happening, we want to do a thorough job and end quickly. Well, let's stay a bit further on this. Uh, the vice chairman of this seven-member committee, who is also the member of parliament for the Bosa North constituency, the Honorable James Agalga, is joining us on Zoom for a conversation on the happenings earlier today. James Agalga, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. One of the things that stood out when you addressed the press earlier today was the decision by the National Security Minister not to provide you, the committee, the details of the National Security's investigations into this leaked audio tape. Is this a position that the committee is going to go by or you would find other means to, to find out the, the details of that report if you so mind? No, no. I, I think that the minister's... Um decision to withhold the report and not uh, uh, finish the committee with uh, a copy is, is right. I mean, in law, it is right. Because you, we, we are talking about the intelligence community here. And they did their own internal investigations. And, and, and are saying that they have submitted the preliminary report to but the minister, in a classified way, you can't uh, demand that what is classified be submitted to um, parliament. If, 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 if we desire to um, still have what is a preliminary report, then we may have to invoke the appropriate procedure under the Constitution by proceeding to the Supreme Court to get the Supreme Court to make an order authorizing them to uh, furnish us with the details of the report, notwithstanding the fact that it is classified. I'm not sure Parliament <coughs> has the appetite to do that, because what you must remember is that we are investigating the matter anyway. So uh, what is it that the NIB managed to unravel that we cannot unravel through our own investigations? Remember that we took the decision that it was appropriate for parliament to investigate the matter and not to allow the executive uh, or its agencies 
to carry out this investigation. So I seriously speaking, I, I, I think that the, the committee found the minister's response satisfactory and, and we do not intend to um, proceed to make further demands for uh, any investigative I report see. from um, the minister's right. outfit. I, I see. But, Zaga, so we understand that Daniel Bugiri Nabo also gave you, the committee, a new audio tape. Is it an entirely new tape from the 45 minutes that you have already? Or is it as a, as a continuation or a fuller version of the 45 minutes audio that you already have? Yeah, so in Buri Nabu's view, uh, this new tape is the fuller version of the earlier tape, which was 45 minutes. Okay. This one is um, almost two hours. Uh, and so we are going to have to interrogate the content like we did in respect of the earlier one. But this time around, you see, you have it in an extended form. So you get to the point where the 45 minutes um, audio terminates, then you have the continuation. Uh, two hours. Uh, I see. Is this the, the, the two hours? Is it um, an entirely new conversation? What I want to understand is if it's an edited version of the 45 minutes or it is one that has an extended conversation that does not capture some of the things within the 45 minutes because some of the respond these persons that you interrogated said that the tape had been doctored or edited well editing i am not too sure whether it's appropriate to use the word editing but uh, it's like the earlier audio was shorter so if you have you have the same audio it plays it's two hours approximately and then it plays for let's say 45 minutes and then you, you terminate at that point so you now have the um you know remaining part of the same audio uh, the committee will definitely be making a comparison of the two tapes just to satisfy itself that look what we have now is nothing but the fuller version of what was earlier played. Uh, we need to do some just a position here because what the witness tells us is that the um, what went viral and was played before the committee was a short version of what he actually had in his possession and that if we play the fuller version, you'd find that uh, the first 45 minutes of it is what we already have in our uh, possession and so what we have now would simply just give us the um, remaining part of the same tip which is about two hours long so that is all there is to the um, you know tip. Uh, the, the, the new tape but we'll satisfy ourselves that yes indeed um, nothing was taken out by way of editorial work or whatever, we must be sure that it was not doctored. Okay. That would be done by the committee. I see. I needed to establish that. So the two hours you have now, this new tape, which you say is two hours long, is a continuation of the 45 minutes that you have. But <laughs> COP Alex Mensa earlier today, after your in-camera hearings, um, told journalists who accosted him that the truth will come out soon, just for the benefit of your, yourself. You Take a look at this, and, and, and I'm going to ask you a question on the basis of that. Take a look. No, 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 the, the process is everything is going on well. Everything is going on well. So when are we, when are we expecting you? The second of October. The yeah. second of October, you should be coming before the committee. Yes. All right. Thank you. What, what's your message to Ghanaians? I don't know. I don't want to speak now. Ghanaians are willing to hear from you. The truth will come out. The truth? Yes. From COP Alex Mensa? Yes. All right. Yes. I wish to see you again. <laughs> so he says the truth is going to come out soon. On a Gaga. So with, with this income hearings and then also all what we've, we've seen and heard from all the persons that you have interrogated, what 
is the committee the being cautious of in operating within your terms of reference to ensure that the things that happen in camera would not also compromise in any way what we have heard publicly being declared by the persons who have appeared before you? Well, you recall that when the in particular those two they um, did not want to make some disclosures um, openly so we obliged them the opportunity to make those disclosures in camera so we would simply give them the opportunity to uh, present to the committee um, the evidence they thought was inappropriate to be that that should have been adduced i mean before the camp and and when they do that of course we would uh, uh test the veracity of whatever they say and once we are done with uh, this second leg of the exercise uh, we would draw the cuttings and uh, evaluate the evidence that would have been collated and then make a report and present to the plenary. Will you support the call for the commissioning, at least for the establishment of a commission of inquiry to, to give more weight? Into, to into, your... into the, the issues that you have actually put out there. Would you support that call? To the work that we have done, they will be repeating what we have done. Take, for instance, what the Mill Short Commission of Enquiry did. They did what we are doing now. They called witnesses. The witnesses were examined. And in the final analysis, a report was sent to the president. The difference between a commission of inquiry and a parliamentary committee is that with the parliamentary committee, we don't have to submit any report to the president. We would submit our report to the plenary. And at the plenary, our findings will be debated. Our recommendations would be considered. And if, if, if adapted by the House, Mr. Speaker would send the recommendations to the appropriate quarters for implementation. Mm -hmm. In this country, we know the executive arm implements policy. So uh, the ministries involved, if, if, for instance, it's about police reform, then Parliament would submit those recommendations to the sector minister right. and for the sector minister to initiate appropriate policy to, um, you know, bring about the reforms that we would have uh, recommended. But in the case of a, a commission of inquiry, you know, when a commission of inquiry uh, completes its work, their reports are usually submitted to the president, and, and the president, once he uh, takes delivery of uh, such a report, is entitled, I mean, in law, to issue a white paper. And in the white paper, he either rejects some recommendations or accepts them. Where recommendations are rejected, <laughs> the, the, the matter ends there. So, so the, the, the two are similar but distinct, I mean, in character. So we, we, we are not going to recommend that another commission of inquiry be set up to redo our work. No, 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 we can't do that. I we see. won't go there. Well, you, you have adjourned the sittings to October 2, 3, and 4. Right? Within now and that period, what are you going to be doing? First of all, the, um, uh, the lawyers for some of the witnesses wanted the committee to furnish them with a new um, tape that has emerged. So, and we thought that it was proper to grant them the opportunity to um, go through um, the new tape and, and prepare the, the, their clients well to respond to the questions that uh, we would be asking them so, so, so we, 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 first of all, that was one of the reasons why we had to adjourn. Additionally, you know, the, um, an, a national exercise is underway. I'm talking about the uh, limit, the, the 
a limited registration exercise for persons who have turned 18 or those who previously uh, do of age did not register and do not have their names captured on the voters register. That is an important exercise for members of parliament. So we'd also want to visit our constituencies and then uh, ensure that those who ought to be captured in the voters register are, are duly captured. It has become necessary for us to take those steps because you have uh, an EC which believes that the right of citizens to register and vote the political rights of citizens must be disrespected. You see, because they've confined the exercise to only the offices of the EC in the various district capitals. That makes the entire process very cumbersome. In, and if care is not taken, a lot of um, qualified people are going to be disenfranchised. You know, the, 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 the such, such, such a step makes it imperative for members of parliament to go back to their constituencies and uh, to get uh, people sensitized I so see. that, you know, people would uh, brief the odds and then uh, go and, and, and have and their names captured register. on the region. I say, Honorable Judge Gaga, thank you. Thank you for your time uh, here on Ghana tonight and uh, for that information uh, also from your sittings earlier today. James Agaga is vice chair of this seven-member ad hoc committee probing this leaked audio tape. A number of things we're learning now. A two-hour-long new tape has been made available to the committee by Bugiri Nabu. This is the continuation of the 45 minutes which they had earlier. And then also COP Alex Mensah talking about the truth that the Ghanaians will know uh, going forward. Stay with us here on Ghana tonight. When these issues come out, the latest of it, you will hear it right here on this platform. But before we go, coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, uh, the National Democratic Congress insists the new cocoa prize announced by President Kofuado is a ripoff on cocoa farmers, but the NPP maintains the increase is a record high. So we've heard from the various political actors, government, indeed, the NDC on this matter. But how about the cocoa farmers as well? They have a voice, critical voice in all of this. After this quick break, the cocoa farmers will be joining us to have their take on this new prizes. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. I want you so bad, Alpha Cracker. I want you. I want to say yes, I can't resist. I want you. Ooh, I want wow. you. Cracker. I want you so bad off the crack. I don't recall one casa. <laughs> Have a goodness rich in milk and butter in Alpha Cracker. Yummy and deliciously crunchy. But I can't resist you. Alpha Crackers.
simply irresistible. This advert is FDA approved. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful for M Punch Wana? Ha! Problems <laughs> Me just say my name quickly, and pass on my name in and I'm a genius of the man. Now, when we fear for the hard in the jars, you had everything. I have secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. Who is the ultimate energy personality of the year at the seventh edition of your prestigious Ghana Energy Award? Under the theme Ghana's Energy Transition Framework, Sector Institutions has building block for the 2030 to 2040 target. You can nominate yourself or an institution for categories such as CEO of the Year, Energy Investment Impact Award, Energy Signature Award, Endorsement, Validation, Industry Partners, Media Partners, TV3, Ghana Energy Awards, Seven Years of Redefining Excellence. You are a major stakeholder in nation building. Your voice matters. Start your day with us. We simplify the conversations, we break down the jargons and technicalities. We keep you well informed throughout the week. Start your day with us. We give the leaders the mandate to govern our affairs. We have a responsibility to hold them to account. It begins here. Start your day with us. Good morning, Ghana, Africa, and the rest of the wonderful world. Welcome to Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. Start your day well informed. Start with us on Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. Catch the Sunrise Morning Show with me, Johnny Hughes, Helen Apianpofo, and William Asidu. Weekdays from 5.55 a.m. to 10 a.m. only on 3FM 92.7. Your urban lifestyle radio. Get ready for another cultural explosion like never before. On 21st September, Africa will witness an ultimate celebration of African diversity and flavor at the 3FM AfroConnect event. This is the place to experience the magic of African arts and creativity. You also get to unite in a sizzling jollof war competition, igniting a culinary showdown. Will Cote d'Ivoire hold the jollof war title? So whether you're passionate about food, art games, or simple Simply making new connections, 3FM Afro Connect event on the 21st of September is the place to be. Venue, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. To sell, call 053-220-0927. 3FM Afro Connect, connecting Africa and beyond. Brought to you by 3FM 92.7, your urban lifestyle radio. The 3FM Afro Connect is proudly sponsored by... I'm... Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Now, there's been a lot of back and forth about the recently announced new prices of uh, cocoa bags as announced by the president over the weekend. Now, the concern is that it is not a true reflection of what the farmers, the cocoa farmers in this country, deserve. Now, this was President Kofuado um, announcing the new cocoa prices over the weekend. Take a look. Until recently, international prices of cocoa have remained relatively low and made worse by COVID-19. In spite of this, Cocoa Board and government have been taking the very hard decision of increasing producer price of cocoa. Cocoa prices have increased from 7,600 CDs per ton in 2016 to 12,800 CDs per ton in 2022, a significant increase 
of 68%. This has had an adverse impact on Coco Board's financial performance. However, the sustainability of the entire industry hinges on a well-remunerated producer who's willing to invest in business only with the certain that government will pay the appropriate price. The international market is beginning to pick up and government, in keeping with our promise to our gallant cocoa farmers, has today increased cocoa prices from 12,800 CDs per ton to 20,943 CDs per ton. Or 1,308 CDs per bag. That price is 70.5% of the gross FOB price and is equivalent to $1,821 per ton. It is the highest to be paid to cocoa farmers across West Africa in some 50 years. Take note of that, that the president said is the highest to be paid to cocoa farmers in West Africa. We'll, we'll be finding out based on the cocoa farmers' own knowledge, if this is indeed the case. But this is what the former president, John Mahama, flag of the NDC, uh, also responded after this uh, announcement by President Kofuado. said the government's just announced increase in the farm gate price of cocoa is a ripoff of our hardworking cocoa farmers and their families who continue to sustain our economy through their toil continues with the international market price surging to a 46-year record high of $3,600 per ton. The government should have given our cocoa farmers their fair share of the international FOB price. Sadly, the government has chosen to give them a paltry 1,308 CDs per bag, constituting only 52.7% of the FOB price of the product on the international market. This is unfair to our cocoa farmers who have been worse off since the NPP took over the reins of government in 2017. He says in 2016, his government, in addition to the free fertilizer and free cocoa seedlings program, gave cocoa farmers 66.06% of the FOB price of cocoa. And continues that this NPP administration should have built on the foundation. They have rather increased the operational expenses of Cocoa Board and reduced the international FOB share for the farmers. Cocoa farmers certainly deserve better. That's what the former president, uh, the flag bearer of the NDC, put out there earlier. Now, af after this, the NPP also addressed the press. And, and together with the chief executive officer of the Ghana Cocoa Board, also just Joseph Boahenedu, in an open letter to the former president because he mentioned this. And let me just put it on record that we, we checked Bloomberg um, for the current price of a ton of cocoa is $1,374 per ton. That's what Bloomberg is quoting now. So it's actually, in fact, that's $3,674. $3,674 per ton. On Bloomberg so it's way higher than even the 3,600 that was even quoted um, by John Mahama in making reference to the fact that the farmers deserve better but take a look at the NDC as well earlier today when they addressed the press um, specifically about this cocoa pricing was speaking to some cocoa farmers the minority leader Kessler to forcing was there he had this to say and this is for years, she say, can hear the Yawa Bima and Kabadibia, Yazabama, two twenty five million cities. Nay, the premium at Tomodo, Yanakako, twenty eight million Ghana cities. Babo. The NDC government would have increased the price to two thousand eight hundred cities. This government is insensitive. Why am I not a man? Why am I not a man? And this is Babi. The next NDC government will increase the bag of cocoa for you. Be rest assured. So, 
This is the NDC minority. In fact, speaking to cocoa farmers, the audience there were cocoa farmers. Now, the NPP also addressed the press after the NDC press conference earlier today, responding to some of the issues they raised. You take a listen to the NPP. We're here because the NDC is either intentionally, because they have been in government before, so I wouldn't say they don't know. They know. But they're intentionally, for mischief purposes, confusing spot price with forward price that we have achieved. They are not the same. And so this is what the drama the NDC want to create in a half. And we want to plead with you that the facts are clear. Those who care about Ghanaian farmers is clear. This government, this MPP government, led by Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, thought about Ghanaians and generated that additional income for them, a free $400 living income differential. This government, for many years, the dream in the Cocoa Board Act to create a pension scheme for cocoa farmers, this government is realizing that dream. That's the government that thinks about Ghanaians. This government, this government that introduced cocoa rehabilitation program to ensure that cocoa trees that yielded 10, uh, 10 20 pods per tree can now yield 100, 300 and more. So you, you hear him talk about, and that's Richard Ahiyagba, he's uh, the director of communications of the MPP. He talks about the spot price and then the forward pricing. What the Cocoa Board CEO explained or res in response to the concerns raised by the NDC was that the cocoa being produced this year has already been sold. So they, they do the forward pricing. So they use more of last year's rates to have already sold this year's cocoa. So the spot price that we are seeing on Bloomberg now, that's $3,674 per ton, is not even applicable because we're using another formula. We'll be finding out from the cocoa farmers whether this formula is, is benefiting them. Stevenson Anani Boating is the president of the Ghana National Cocoa Farmers Association. He's joining us on Zoom. Anani Boating, thank you so much for staying and joining us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, the president makes the point that this recently announced increase in the cocoa prices pay back for you, the cocoa farm is actually the highest in West Africa. How much does the farmers of the cocoa farmers in, in Ivory Coast, how much do they get for a bag of cocoa? That's if you're aware. At the moment, I know they, they, they sell it at uh, 1,800. In fact, about eight months ago, I went there, and you know, last year, government increased the cocoa uh, to 1,450 for a bag of cocoa at Abrico. But along the line, it, it seems the prices have been increased. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they sell their cocoa to private companies, they do their own adjustment here and there. But then, about what, what, less than two weeks ago, uh, one and a half weeks ago, I went to Agricoast again. I went to Elibo, where we have our office there in Akufa. And then I tried to uh, enter Ivory Coast and see what is going on there. When I went, the price was still 8800 the government hasn't increased the cocoa of uh, 2023, 2024 season yet, but I know the price is like that. And I was trying to inquire about why it is like that. And he told me that uh, people smuggle cocoa from Ghana to the place just because the cocoa at Ghana is 800. And uh, when you take it there, they buy it at 1,800. We don't know who and who does that. But we know the businessmen have taken advantage of that. So if you ask me at the moment what I know, it's 1,800 cities. 1,800 1, cities. 
and um, you are now getting 1,308. So obviously, Cote d'Ivoire, from what you're telling me, Cote d'Ivoire cocoa farmers are paid higher in terms of payback price. But you see, if you could, Ms. Anna, if you could sit back a bit for me, because um, your appearance on the Zoom is cutting off your head. So please position yourself well for me. You are critical in this whole conversation. You are the cocoa farmers. Let me find out from you if this 1,308 is going to discourage smuggling because one, that's one of the objectives that the president talks about that this increase will help discourage you, that's cocoa farmers or anybody involved in smuggling Ghana cocoa outside of this country. And this forward pricing mechanism that Cocoa Board is talking about, does it benefit you, the farmers, in any way? Uh, this is a serious issue because... Uh you know, before the price which was uh, approved by the government was 1,450. And if government is increasing our cocoa to uh, increasing it, and it goes up to 1,308, it's likely that we've, uh, we are nowhere because people will do it, and they will do it seriously just because now you know people know, uh, everybody will know the price compared to the previous year it's not even up to the stand, i mean their level and for that matter this practice will never stop it rather it is going to be uh, encouraging more for people to do it it's rather going to encourage it i see but you know the the cocoa board ceo is talking about the forward pricing mechanism and the fact that that's what is being used. So the cocoa we are producing this year has already been sold. That's the understanding that, that we get at, at that forward pricing mechanism structure or the formula that they are using. But beyond all the back and forth, you are, you are the, the farmers, either the beneficiaries or the victims in what the discussion that's going on right now. Is this forward pricing mechanism benefiting you in any way? At all. Uh, but you know what? We cocoa farmers nowadays don't trust any cocoa, uh, any politician because they have frustrated us for a long time. You know, our worry is that any time they come on, uh, they want to win a power or come to power, they use we cocoa farmers for uh, uh, votes for power. They will come and tell us, give a lot of promises, but at the end of the day, they do nothing. Let us consider this kind of uh, PNDC law 81, which is Cocoa Board law. It mandated we cocoa farmers not to sell our product to anybody apart from government. It's the same constitution that mandated Cocoa Board to do pension scheme and our welfare for us. But for 37, 40 years now, nothing has been done about it. Anytime any government comes, he promised. And now they are coming to give us promise. When Anadu came, he make, I mean, he learned the thing. He has even uh, uh, commissioned the board for that thing. To date, we all heard that uh, New Edubiase is where they are starting the thing from. Go and ask them, and you can find out from uh, MPRA and know that whether uh, even a single person has been, uh, you know, uh, 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 as accepted onto the scheme. It's bad. It's bad. So we have no trust for any of these politicians. So farmers and cocoa farmers, so far as NACOFA, Ghana National Cocoa Farmers Association is concerned, we have, have our thoughts about these politi politicians who always try to deceive us. I see. Uh, thank you uh, for your time here and then also making your voice heard in all of this. Cocoa Farmers, very critical indeed. Stephen An Ananeboating is the president of the Ghana National Cocoa Farmers Association.
appreciate your time. Let's go next to the issues happening in the NPP. As in North, uh, as a central member of parliament, Kennedy Japan secured a top spot, followed by Dr. Baumia on the ballot paper for the November 4 NPP flag bearer race. The aspirants have been speaking about what their positions mean today, and, and you're, we're going to put that on the screen right now. This is how they appear uh, on the ballot paper as per the earlier balloting today, and this is it. That's what you see there, and a dynamo from the bottom up to uh, Dr. Fria Koto, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, and Kennedy in Japan. And in fact, this is not the first time Kennedy in Japan is speaking number one. Uh, during the Super Delegates Conference, he picked number one. In fact, he was number one on the ballot paper. So Kwame Usu is a spokesperson for Kennedy Ohine Japan. He's joining us on Zoom. Also, thank you for your time here on Ghana tonight. So you, you pick number one again. Does this mean anything to you? Well, good evening to your listeners. Uh, and uh, the issue about picking one earlier on and one the second time, <laughs> I don't know whether a mere coincidence or I cannot say, but on our way to the uh, committee place at the headquarters, Honorable said he was going to pick one today. <laughs> I don't know how he picked it up, but luckily we did. Uh, I would say that this particular first place that has been picked, uh, people believe in Omen in our part of the world, and it's going to boost and give confidence to those grassroots people working for Honorable. Nothing at all is positive for us. But for me, I will only caution that our people do not relent. They just don't go and then jubilate and say, because we have picked one, we are going to be the winners. I believe in hard work. And all of them should go right now and start door to door and make sure that the dreams and the good things that Honorable <clears throat> has for this country is achieved. I see. So what, when you meet the delegates, what, what do you tell them? Well, what's the message, really? Uh, I think we've gone to almost, we are only left about 33 constituencies. We've gone through the country about two times. We've delivered message that everybody is very much aware. Uh, the principal thing will be PAD. Uh, the most important thing for us is discipline. This country, we need a disciplinarian so that to change the mindset of all of us. Because no one person can govern the country. You can see contractors who do the roads the next two months. It just, everything just breaks up and nobody gets punished. I need to be a leader, be a key for all of us. People that work around him, uh, his appointees, uh, the police, uh, the private workers and contractors who get government contracts will not shortchange Ghanaians. And I believe that is the key thing that everybody is going to look up to him come uh, December 2024. Okay. The first step we are going through mm -hmm. is just an internal process. But I believe the ultimate is to choose a flag bearer who will be able to be appealing to the rest of the people in our country. And I believe his honorable can who has all that it takes to be able to face I see, NDC, but you, well, given the uh, current uh, economic also, crisis be, be, that we Quickly, have before we go, so you, you had concerns after the special or the super delegates conference. Have those concerns been addressed by the party? Um, so unfortunately, we, we lost Kwame also there. Uh, he is a uh, spokesperson for Kennedy in Japan. And Dennis Miracle Sabuaji is also a member of Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya's campaign team. He's also joining us on Zoom. Thank you for your time, Ms. Abadji. So from number 10 in the super delegates, you are now number two. Uh, what message are you carving out of this, of this position as we've seen consistent with, with the party in the past? Oh, I mean, I, you remember we had this conversation when the special delegates conference was coming up and our position was clear that for us our focus is to reach out to 
party executives. In this case, the polling station executives, the electoral area coordinators, and then the regional up to national executives who are votes and government officials who are votes so that we could sell Dr. Mahmoud Baumier's message to them and then get them to vote for us in the D-Day. The second job we would have to do is what we call voter education, which is part of every electionary process. And so we've never really been so much fixated on our position on the ballot. And I think we made that point quite clear during the special delegate, and that continues to be our position. Well, now. I see. So no messaging around this number two position that you've picked? I mean... It's just voter education. We've, we didn't have any special messaging around the number 10, except to say that find Dr. Mahmoud Baumi on the ballot paper. He is number 10 on the ballot, and then you vote for him. Same applies to, to, to the November 4th elections. I mean, I think I've made that point severally, that Dr. Mahmoud Baumi is one person that everybody can recognize and identify in this country. Children, adults, old women, old men, young, can identify him um, no matter where he finds himself on a ballot paper. What is crucial is that we capture the minds and the hearts of the voter. And once we're able to capture their minds and the hearts of the voter, um, they will find you on the ballot paper and, and vote for you. So our message remains that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the MPP's surest bet to win election 2024, and the party people can count on that, and, and, and for that reason, they should give him their, their support and vote. Oh, so we're trying to rectify the connection with um, Kwame Uso, but what's the next step of the campaign for you uh, after this number two that you have picked? Dennis? We, we, since last week, the Vice President has been back on the road post the 26th August elections. He's been um, to the OT region. He's currently in the voter region. It will be doing the voter region up to somewhere around the 17th of, of, of this month. And then it will move to um, Western North. It will move to Ahafo and Western North, Bono, Bono East, and then go to the, um, the five northern regions. Before the special delegates, the vice president had done five regions. And so we still have about 11 regions to go. He's currently done one. Um, he's on the second one. Then we would have done seven, and then he continues like that. The objective still remains the same. Get to the voter, sell your message to the voter, tell the voter why you are the best qualified party person to lead this party. See, but, well, anyway, thank you. Uh, but, Ms. Also, I understand that you, you're back. You raise concerns uh, that your candidate, a Japan team, unfortunately, we still having challenges uh, with... Kwame Owusu's connection on the Zoom. Apologies for that. He speaks for Kennedy and here in Japan and also Dennis Merkel Sabaji is a member of the Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya campaign team. But before we go, uh, this year's, this, this month's inflation, as announced by the government's institution for the month of August, has seen a significant reduction to 40.1%. That's the consumer price index is the lowest in the last 12 months but food inflation is still high about 55 percent take a look and that's what you see there in april 41.2 42 42.2 percent in may and in june 42.5 percent in july 43.1 percent and in august 40.1 percent but just bear in mind that food inflation is still high at 55, from 55 percent down to 51.5 percent, so that is still the concern that the government station expressed earlier today, and that means that you still we are still buying food prices at a very very high cost. It's a conversation that we're going to be having in the coming days, especially with the launch of this second phase of the Planting for Food and Jobs program. Whether it's going to make any significant difference and the prices of items of food that we see on the market. Thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana Tonight. Join us same time tomorrow. On behalf of the rest of the team, we appreciate your company. I am Alfred Okansi. Have a good night.
Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.